So Mark was going to give us a good welcome, but I guess that's up to us now. So welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, we're gonna go over, I sent out um, kind of a brief agenda of what we're gonna cover, but um, we'll hopefully cover all the questions that you guys submitted. We do have um, a little bit of a PowerPoint that I can share afterwards as well as the recording of this. So you can look back and rewatch it if you need to for any pieces that you missed. Um, and we'll, we'll talk about some frequently asked questions at the end, but then we'll also open it up to people um, for any questions at the end. If you do have questions along the way, feel free to either raise your hand or type them in the chat um, or just unmute yourself and, and shout them out. That's fine too. So uh, Jason, you can get started. Yeah, and uh, before we kind of get going with some of this, um, we uh, I, I would just like to mention that Zoom does a lot. And even with the functionality that we use it for, there's still a lot of untapped stuff that we use it for. So what we're gonna go over is some of the things that we've used um, for ourselves, but as well as you know doing it for some of the athlete activities and, and support, there's some advanced side of things. So Zoom can be as easy as, or, or as, as complex as you want it to be. Um, so obviously, you know, use it at whatever your comfort level is. Um, and also uh, Brittany and I um, and some of the other staff spend a lot of time on Zoom um, running Zoom meetings. So if there's something that we go through and you feel like we went too fast or we didn't fully explain it, uh, feel free to either, you know, let us know or, or put something in the chat and we can have us go over it because um, I went over some of the stuff I'm going over and, and, and then Brittany and I shared it with each other what we're going over and it made sense to us, but we obviously know Zoom pretty well. So we just want to make sure that we get it to the level where, where everybody has a good understanding of it too. So. What I was going to first start off with is just the basic part. I, I guess I'm curious if anybody wants to uh, raise their hand. Uh, how many people have already set up a Zoom account? Which, if you haven't, that's great because that's the first thing I'm going to go over. So I, I see one, one or two. Um, so what? I'll, so I'll share my screen here, and we'll see if it lets me do it with the email address. Otherwise, Brittany, I may have to have you send me a message. Um, so this, uh, you guys can see the Zoom website. Okay, I can't. When, I, when I'm screen, when I'm screen share, I couldn't see you. Yes, so yes, I just double checked. <laughs> All right. So when you go on the website, it's Zoom.us, um, and you'll see right here in orange it says sign up. It's free. So that's the the first way, the way to do it. So it's going to require a birth date. I'm just going to go January first. I'll make myself old now. Well, 1923 seems like a lot. Um, here, let's go there. And then it's going to ask you for uh, a work or uh, uh, an email address. So it will require an email address. Let's see if it lets me do, do that one. All right. So once you've entered your email address, it will send you something to your inbox. So you should see. My Gmail inbox has the email, and it'll give you'll have an email that will come through that says this is your email, and you hit activate account. So when you do that, you hit you just hit the activate account um, pro, uh, button. So I'm automatically pull up the next web page, which is going to ask you for first name, last name, and then for you to create a password. No pressure, we're all watching. <laughs> right? And then it does have something, are you signing up on uh, uh, behalf of primary or secondary K through 12 institution? I'm assuming that's because there's a separate, di like a separate offer for, for school programs, but uh, we'll hit no on that and we'll kind of go into what we're looking at, um, um, looking at doing for ours. So the second thing it's gonna say, invite colleagues. So they're gonna want you to provide more information so they can, um, get other people signed up for Zoom. You can hit just skip this step. And then what it will do is it will give you this screen, which you can do a, a test meeting. Well, we don't necessarily need to do a, a I, I, if I hit a test meet meeting, I don't think Zoom will let me do a Zoom meeting in Zoom, but it gives you an option to go into it as a test meeting and try some things out and, and do all that type of stuff. 
So, um, so you can just, if you want to, you can just skip onto that account, go onto the account, and then this is what it will send you. Um, so before I get too far ahead on that, does that make sense for everybody on, um, on the, the account setup? It's, it's pretty quick and easy. And at this point, it's all free, um, which is what we want people to do is create that free account. All right. So um, the other thing we're going to touch base about, so the, on your free account, it will give you some information as far as what, you, what your meetings can be and all that type of stuff. So the difference between a free account and a paid account has a lot to do with uh, what access you have to be able to. Uh, so on the free account, it, there, you, can, you can set up a free account and run meetings. Uh, there's a time limit. I believe it's 45 minutes is the, the maximum amount of time. There's a cap on the number of participants, um, which this one actually does, I realize on the free one now, it, it does allow up to 100 participants, which is gonna be more than enough for pretty much everybody, if not uh, everybody. Um, but it's gonna be 45 minutes, there's limited functionality and all that type of stuff. Um, and so what you get from doing the, the pro account, which is the, the paid version of it, is that you have unlimited time it doesn't, you don't pay it all per meeting. You don't pay it all, um, it's a yearly fee and it covers everything and you can use all the different uh, functions that Zoom has to offer. So what we're working on currently um, is, um, is the system that we're gonna be utilizing for getting agency accounts to be able to utilize our, 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 uh, our uh, a discount that we have. So typically a yearly subscription to Zoom is $150. What we have going and what, what we'd be try what we'd be doing for agencies, I believe I'm trying I think I'm not sure if it's hundred percent finalized, but it's about $75. It's like a 50% discount. And that has to do with nonprofit. And then I believe it helps to have us, you know, you have multiple accounts uh, under the same thing. It gives us a bulk discount, which is the benefit of us doing that. So what the system we're looking at is that uh, we're, we're gonna regulate it to have one account per agency. I don't think any agencies are gonna need more than one account. Um, it's gonna be, uh, we're, 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 you're gonna to need to create your free account first, and then you're gonna share your information with us, the, the email uh, address that you used for that. Um, as we're gonna need a agency manager approval since it is gonna be using agency funds. Um, the, the account that you're gonna sign up for for Zoom through Special Olympics is gonna be for Special Olympics use only. Um, and, was, and then um, just, you know, whatever email address and contact information you have, you're gonna share that with whoever is gonna be using your uh, Zoom account. So if it's gonna be one of those things where the agency manager sets it up and you send out the, the, the login information for your agency, so your coaches can set up meetings and all that type of stuff, um, you would you would share the same account there, and uh, one of the limit uh, one of the limitations that we'll have with that is that you can, which we have uh, why we have multiple accounts on the Special Olympics side, is that you can only do one meeting per account at the same time. So if you have multiple um, you have multiple basketball teams, and um, you all want to meet at the same time, it wouldn't be able to do that. Um, but there's a way to get around that, which Brittany will go off go out and talk about when we get to breakout rooms. But um, from individual meetings, you can have one at a time. So um, I think that's what, um, let's create the account, share login contact, and you will share that login information with us as well, just so we have it. Um, and then the last point for that, since it's a yearly subscription, um, it will automatically renew after 12 months. And so we were gonna do our best to try to notify you with enough time to let us know if you would like to renew your account or if you'd like to terminate your account after the first year, because it's that one thing, once it hits that deadline, it will charge an additional $75. And I don't wanna, oh, we're gonna try to do that so agencies aren't on the hook for $75 so they've kind of dwindled using it once we kind of get back to a normal schedule and all that type of stuff. Um, any questions about the process um, for, for from the SOE side of things? Um, and I will say we'll probably we'll, we'll we'll be sending out that information final information to agencies. It's probably going to look like the beginning of January for people to start signing up for accounts. Um. Jason, I have a, this is Sharon. I have a question. Now we have Waukesha County Special Olympics, so we have several different agencies. 
could sure. we just get one for ours and share it between like New Berlin and uh, Waukesha and um, whoever wants to use it? Or would you recommend us each getting one? Uh, I, I say I'll, I'll, I'll let it open for Mark a little bit here. He was shaking his head a little bit. That's why I asked the question. I saw his response. The, the preference would be, and I apologize, I had internet issues and knock wood, it's going to work, um, that each agency has its own rather than a shared. Okay, thank I, you. I, I think the biggest thing with that is that, again, if you're managing multiple meetings at the same, try to schedule around multiple meetings at the same night, it could get a lot if you're having multiple agencies on the same account. And it's probably just, it's a lot more manageable from, from our end of eight individual agencies have that. And I know 899, uh, that whole Waukesha group is is kind of a unique situation to Special Olympics, but I, I think Mark, uh, you know, I agree with Mark that it's probably gonna be easier just from a logistics standpoint to have individual agencies have it. Um, and then, and, and, and you can really weigh um, as agencies, if it makes sense to have the free account uh, for what you're gonna use it for, or if it makes sense to have the, the, the other account as well, so. Yeah, sure. And I could I could see where some of the, the agencies within that would want the 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 free one. So um, it just makes more sense to to kind of divide that up and it's easier to to watch and maintain. So good question though. All right. So I'm gonna go through when hey, you Jason, sign in. Uh, Jason, sorry. it's Mary. I have a question. So yeah. I have a Zoom account. I don't know how to use it. Yep. But if an agency's already set up a Zoom account and wants to like merge it into the Special Olympics, can they do that? So yeah, and that's what we were talking about. You would create a Zoom account. Uh, are, you, are, you, is, are you talking about a, paid, a current paid account or a free one? A current a free one. one. Yep. That's that's exactly what we want people to do is to set up a free account, and then my mm -hmm. what we're it looks like we're able to do is when you give us your pat your your information then we add that on to our paid account. So that's actually the way you get the discount. So you should have a free account and then get and then when you sign up for the paid account, you're providing your information for the account you've already created. So th thanks, Mary. I guess the um, news is why would we want a pay account if we only are gonna probably use Zoom maybe like once a month, it would it be worthwhile getting a paid account? Um, it depends on, what you're i mean and I, I guess that's this is that's where that line is if you're depends what you want to use it for um if you're going to use it once a month and you can keep your your activities under 45 minutes it may not make sense for you to get the paid account at this point um if you're going to use if you're going to do longer coaches meetings or something like that um that's then that's when the paid account is going to come into come into play or if you're I, I i'm trying to i don't i believe there's some of the functions that we may go over that may not be available on the free account but once we kind of get things set up, you can kind of play around with it a little bit and see if they if they do work on those. But the reason why you would do a paid account is if you if you're planning on um, if you want to have meetings where it doesn't automatically cut off after the time frame, you have the unlimited time um, and the unlimited ability or and the ability to to use all the functions. Are you able to do it like for 40 minutes and then have everybody go off and then do a different Zoom meeting on the same night? I believe so. Yep. But yeah, you know. It, it depends. It's just we've learned when we've had issues where we had multiple meetings scheduled and we had to jump off and jump on other ones. That's where you lose people. Um, so you very well can do it. And or if you're an agency manager and you say, I want to have a 45 minute with this team and a 45 minute with this team, you can certainly manage jumping back and forth to some of those. Um, it just makes it a little bit more difficult. But if you can manage that and you want to save the money on it, you, you very well can. Okay, thank so, you. Yep. So, but everything else that we go over for the most part should also should 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 uh, work whether you do the free account or the paid account. Um, and and we we just mentioned the paid account of uh, this process just because it's nice to be able to get that discount um, if you if you were going to use it for more and more. So, um, I knew I do know there's like a, one of the agencies was talking about using a using it for three different basketball teams. And if that's the case, I would probably recommend. Um, doing uh, doing it, um, the, the paid account. But if you're gonna do monthly meetings under 45 minutes, or like the financial group is gonna meet for less than 45 minutes, I would definitely say then the free one's probably okay. So when you go on Zoom and you're logged in, this is gonna be on the homepage. So it's either, you know, like I said, it showed you the box to say, 
sign, sign, sign up, it's free or sign in. Once you sign in, you can do that type of stuff. And you can do a meeting in a couple different ways. So the way that a lot of people, that a lot of our meetings are done, if you click on my account, you'll go on to your, your profile. Your profile is gonna include all your information that you can change things um, if you need to. Um, but it's also gonna have this button over here that on the, on the side here that says meetings. So how you schedule a meeting is there's a button on the right hand side here. It'll say schedule a meeting. So you click on that. And then it's gonna ask you for a topic. I'm just gonna put test meeting. You can put a description on it. So if you would like to, otherwise you can leave that area blank. Sorry, and I believe the basic plan has a 40 minutes limit. Okay, so this is this is the information. I apologize, I didn't have that already. So your Zoom basic plan is 40 minute time limit on a meeting with three or more participants. If you have less than three, I believe that time limit's not a, not a factor. Um, and then that's why they would say the upgrade would be for, for meetings longer than four, 40 minutes for people with for more than three or um, more participants. So right now, since it's I'm on the free account, I'm just going to schedule a 30 minute or 30 minute meeting just just for the sake of it. So it'll ask you the date. You can either enter the date or you can choose on the calendar. So if I want to say I'd like an 8 p.m. meeting tomorrow night, um, so you just use the date, the time, a.m. and p.m. The duration of the meeting. If you have the free account, it doesn't, or if you have the paid account, it doesn't matter as much if you go over that time frame. But it it will help on your scheduling, and I'll show you what that looks like after we schedule this meeting. If you say, "Hey, I want to meet, do a coach's meeting every Thursday night at 8 p.m.," you can hit reoccurring meeting, and you can say, "I would like it daily, weekly, monthly." Um, and so, let's say I want to do that. I can say I would like a weekly meeting, and I'll say repeat once a week on Thursdays at, or repeat for four weeks every Thursday at, th at that date. Um, or you can say, I want to do it for the next, you say, I want to do it for a basketball season. That's 12 weeks. You can do that as well. Or sorry. So once a week, seven times right there is what I have. So you have two options too when you're set at a meeting for security reasons, they make you choose one of these two. So you can either choose to have a passcode for your meeting or the meeting that you joined today, you have it as a waiting room um, where the, the host would start the meeting and then everybody would show up in the waiting room. And, and Brittany will go over a little bit what that looks like in meeting. But the difference between this is a passcode, once users sign in and they enter the passcode, they can enter the meeting. So that's prior to the, the, the host starting the meeting. You can get so people can kind of come in on their own time. In the waiting room, the host will get into the meeting and then they will have to admit people in as they come. So I don't know if on my screen it showed, there's a couple of times where people popped on the meeting and it shows on the top, Mark Wolfram has joined your meeting. Do you want to admit him? So that's that's one of the things you'd have to do if you had a waiting room. So um, Pasco works really well if you have meetings that you're just fine with people joining at any time. Waiting room is kind of nice. Uh, we normally use this for like this meeting and coaches meetings. Where we can get staff in, we can kind of get our ducks in a row, and then you let people in afterwards. It also works, you know. Um, previously, we've used it for if we did like a, a Zoom interview or something like that. It's nice to have some time to be able to choose when people come in. Uh, every meeting I set up, I always choose. They'll say who can use video, um, host or participants. I always turn both of them on, especially you know with their athlete-led stuff. Um, it makes it so obviously then they can turn their video on if they want to. Um, you can mix, there's different settings where you can say that once people log in, their, their video is automatically on, or you give them the choice to turn it on. The default is that they get the choice to turn it on. So if someone doesn't want to turn their video on, they don't have to. What I always choose for meetings is I click this button for allow participants to join at any time. That prevents it, so that, or that allows it so that if the host is running late, that people can join a meeting prior to the host joining. You also have the option if you're going to do like a meeting for coaches or parents or parents or whatever it is. If you want to keep them on mute when they come in, you can choose to do that here. There's also a way to do it in meeting as well. Um, if you want to make sure you're recording the meeting, we choose to hit record, um, but you can automatically record the meeting um, if, if you check this. Um, and then you can, um, I never really use the approve or block entry for users from a specific region. I know that's a security thing that people would use. 
Um, but um, um, I don't, we've never really had a, a need for it from, our, from any of our meetings. So once you have this information in, um, you'll go ahead and hit save. I'm gonna see. So then it will give you this screen um, that tells you you have a test meeting scheduled. Here's the time and date. It's a reoccurring meeting. So you can see all the occurrences if you'd like. Meeting ID, there's a passcode attached to it. And you're like, okay, well, I would like to share this. And so you can share it in multiple ways. I typically, from, from our perspective, I normally use an Outlook calendar um, because that's what we use for Special Olympics. But you'll see when it loads on the calendar. So it's automatically to make a meeting for your Outlook or it can do it for Google Calendar or Yahoo Calendar. And then when I load it, give it a sec. Oh, it's, uh, so here's my test meeting, it loads right there, right? So you can either send this information as part of an Outlook one, or you can copy and paste um, this information and you can just send that out. That's what we do for, for all these meetings is that we copy and paste that information and put it into an email for those of you can invite. Just like you join this meeting, you'll have the link that people can click on and then the password's right here. On the paid account, you can change that password to whatever you'd like it to be. So if you want to, so rather than saying, Hey, make sure you remember the passcode code is W2SAG5. You can say, I'm going to put it as SOWI. And then that way, you know, we have a reoccurring meeting and it, the password is the same. So you just know how to get into it. So that's something you can do on a paid account. On the free account, it assigns a password for you as well. So um, I'm just going to show you that um, from doing a meeting. So recurring meeting. So, um, I, that, that's, Sorry. I think, what I had for my first part of this. Um, do we have any questions on that part? One question that came in the chat was, can you show the copy and paste process? So if you were to copy the invite. Copy, if I were to copy uh, it from the from the Zoom account? Yeah. Um, yep. I'm not sure, maybe they're not familiar with like the control, yep. C, control D or the right click. Well, and so there's, there's, yeah, and there's another, there's another option too. So if you see, so on this meeting here, you'll see invite link too. So this is the, this is just the, the, um, um, just the direct link to your meeting. So you can, you can click and hold and, and, um, and highlight it. And then you right click. Uh, you can click cop, is that say copy? And right, paste? yep. So you can either do right click and hit copy or you can just hit copy invitation. And then it'll, it'll have all, this is all the information for it and you hit copy meeting invitation. So it's copied right now. And then um, if you were to go to, let's say I go to my, my email and I'm gonna send it out. I can, I will, I would just right click and hit paste or you can hit, or you can hold control V and it will paste it as well in the area, as long as you've clicked in that area and it'll show, send all this information, it will copy all the, or paste all this information where you want to paste it. Does that answer that, that question? I think so. Okay. So I will, um, so that's, that's the basic setup for meetings. I'll go back on and screen share. I'm going to stop my screen share here real quick. So, Jason, this is Sharon again. I have another question. So if you go over your participation limit, what happens? Do they send you an email or they don't let the other people on? Or do you know, have you ever gone over that? Um, we have so far, I have not been to the point we've been over 100. We've had over 100 in a meeting, but we anticipated over 100 in the meeting. So we, we actually, up, you can upgrade your account even further. Um, but it, it, but I believe it will just cap it, and I would think it would either put them in a waiting room or just say that the meeting is full. If you try to, to log into it, would be my would be my assumption on that. But when we, the first coaches meeting we did that we were in, you know, when we, we did return to play, we 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 upped our account just so we can handle it. We had a bunch over a hundred people who came onto that one, um, and I think there's been other situations where we've done that. I think there's an option to if you see it's getting over a hundred to like. I, that I know a normal uh, account. I don't know how it would work with with having the joint account for us. With us, is that you could like quick upgrade if you needed to. Um, but 
we really, even everything we've run, we haven't had an issue with having over 100. If you anticipate over 100, uh, I think we could maybe touch base with us and we could try to figure out if there's a way for us to temporarily upgrade for that meeting or something like that. Are there, so like, it looks like the free account, you can only have three people. It's no, it's 40 minute meeting. If you have three or more people, you have okay. a max of 100, but um, your time limit is set once you have a meeting larger than two people. Okay, I got it. All right. Thank so if you're just planning on meeting one-on-one -on -one with people, the free account, your your time limit would be a little bit bigger on that. Um, the other thing I guess I should show, um, and I, um, here, I'll show that, I'll, I'll screen share again. Um, the other thing I was gonna share, um, so when you're in your Zoom, so once you've created that meeting, when you go back to meetings, now it will show you tomorrow, 24th, 31st, I have this reoccurring meeting. There's seven weeks in a row that they have that. So you have a schedule, what meetings are, are uh, you have a, a note of what e with each meeting that's been scheduled. So that way, if you have multiple people using your account, that's how you know if you're double booking meetings is, is you can take a look at this and you can see what's already been scheduled. Also, when, you, when you're on this meeting screen, as you see, I hover over it. I can, as, the, as a person who's signed in the account, I can hit start and I'll start my meeting. Um, the other, uh, you can also at this point edit that meeting or if you say, hey, I just realized that next Thursday is Christmas Eve. I'm probably not gonna get anybody on this test meeting. I can go ahead and say, I'm gonna delete this occurrence. So now I'm not gonna have to worry about that one. Um, there's no um, downs. If you have a meeting scheduled and you don't use it, there's no downside other than you can't schedule a meeting at that time. So if you're afraid of like, I don't want to cancel a meeting that I have people coming to, you don't have to. It's just something, you know, for me, if I'm looking at a schedule and I have like multiple people using my account, if I know I'm not going to use that time slot, it makes sense to delete it so it opens it up for somebody else. To use. So that's, that's the real reason to do that. Jason? Uh, yeah. I have a question. Sure. Um, so let's say I'm agency manager and I set up an account. So yep. I put my birth date and my email account and set yep. up the account. If I have a committee of five people yep. and any of them might want to do a Zoom meeting, mm -hmm. would they set up their own like email or would they use my email when they want to do the meeting? Yeah, that, that would be my recommendation is that, so whatever email you use to set it up is one that you're willing to share. I mean, you're not gonna share access to your actual email account, but that email tied to your Zoom account password is what you would share with any of the people who would be setting up the meetings. Okay. Yep, and then that way, you know, that way if you were to do the paid account, that would be the, that would be the one account that you would use for, for your whole agency, but then you're not paying for five different, separate accounts for each committee member to have one. It would be recommended just for you to have one. It'd be easier to manage that way. Okay. One last question. If we do a free account, do we still have to send you guys the information? Do you still want it? We don't, okay, good. Nope, you can, the free account's fine. It's it's open for whoever. We just need the information. Um, there's just one, we wanna make sure that it's, it's oh, that we can add it to our account and to just, in case there's any questions of if it's being used for, you know, if somebody's saying, I wanted to schedule a Special Olympics meeting and they're doing their own holiday party or something like that, you know, there's something for us to follow up on if there's any disputes between, any, you know, between interagencies that they want us to look into. So um, that's that's the main main part for those two things. So, um, but yeah. And then, um, Brittany, I don't do you want to get started with your your PowerPoint? And we can always go back to those things. And then um, as Brittany's doing things, we, we, we did a PowerPoint for this section, I'll say, because uh, you can't screen share the Zoom meeting that you're currently in. So you'll see some wonderful familiar faces in our, in our PowerPoint as well as some athletes and staff and, and maybe some coaches in there. So if you were on anything last night, Brittany may have captured you. <laughs> um, yeah, so when you screen share, you're screen sharing, maybe it's a web browser, like Jason just had up his, his internet. Um, that we all were able to see, but you don't see that person's Zoom 
meeting that they're currently in. So when we were looking at Jason's screen, you couldn't see the Zoom functions and the chat and the and the participants and all of that, which that's what I want to show you. So my loophole is I took some screenshots of a um, of our celebration ceremony last night and added them to a PowerPoint. So hopefully this helps. Um, let me pull it up here. Um, and I'm going to walk through quite a few different things. So um, first of all, can you see my PowerPoint? I can't see any of you. So yes. I, okay, thank you. <laughs> so um, we're going to go through different views. Um, so I guess I should start. Some of this might be review for some of you. You've been on plenty of coaches meetings in the past. You probably know how to mute and unmute yourself and things like that. We do get to a little bit more of the advanced features um, a little later on. So bear with me as we go through some of the basic features. But for some of you, this might be very helpful. So I apologize if it's a little slow in the beginning, but um, hopefully some of this information will be new and helpful for you. So first of all, I just wanted to go over the different views that there are. Um, sometimes it's helpful to understand that there's different views. So if an athlete's having trouble or anybody is having trouble um, kind of understanding what's going on or what they're looking at, it's just, it's nice to know the different options. So um, again, sorry for the, if you're on my screenshot, I apologize if it's an unflattering photo. But um, the first option is the side-by-side -side gallery. So this is what I had up when Jason was screen sharing. Um, you might've had a different view, but in the top right corner, there is a little view button. Um, it's actually right by my circle, just outside of my circle that I have there in red. Um, and if you click on that, there's three different options. So right now we're looking at the side-by-side -side gallery. So you see um, people's videos on one side and you see the screen share on the other. Another option is doing the side-by-side -side with the speaker who is speaking at the time um, is on the screen. So here's one of our athletes was answering this trivia question last night. So this is one way to look at it if you would prefer that. And then the other option they call standard, which is looking at the screen share um, is the largest part of your screen. And then the videos are running along the top. So I just wanted to make sure that you guys were aware there are different ways to view Zoom. Um, just to have those options. Next, we're gonna get into the basic features. And like I say, some of these are very, very basic. So I apologize if this is a little redundant to things you might already know, but I know we have a lot of Zoom newbies on the call. So hopefully this is helpful. So first of all, um, the participant list. So as a person that's setting up a meeting, this is gonna be a very helpful tool for you. So when you see on your Zoom, and you can probably see it on your screen right now, at the very bottom, there's lots of different buttons. And we're basically going to go over all of them. So the first one we're going to talk about is the participant list. So if you clicked on that button, the little people with the number, you'll see a participant list pop up on the right side of your screen. So here I just wanted to show you what the waiting room looks like. So this is probably something you don't see. Um, if you haven't set up a Zoom meeting yourself, but this is something that you will see as the host. So you'll see the participant list in the meeting. So there, there's 48 people already in the meeting and then one person um, joined a little late. So I got an excellent screenshot to share, um, but that would be where you would admit them. If you were to hover over that person's name, it would give you the option to admit them to the meeting. Another thing is um, for the participant list, which is helpful if you hover, hover over anybody's name, there's two blue buttons that appear. One says mute, which can be very helpful, um, especially um, if you have somebody who's very chatty <laughs> or just likes to unmute and you hear a lot of background noise, sometimes it's helpful just to mute them. Um, so that's one option. And another option, it says more with an arrow. So when you click on more with the arrow, this um, little column comes up and there's a few different options. So when that, I just wanted to show one of those things are making someone a host or a co-host. So for example, tonight I logged into the meeting first, so I was automatically the host. And um, if I wanted to make another staff member a co-host, I could click on their name, click that more button so that this menu appears and make them a co-host. And making them a co-host really um, gives them part control 
to share their screen or run polls or do sorts of things like that. So it can be helpful to have multiple hosts on the call. And one function for our co-host that we use a lot is you're having a bigger meeting that has a waiting room. Like for, for example, right now, if Brittany is presenting and I can watch the waiting room. So if somebody comes in, I can let people in or I can mute people as Brittany is speaking. So she doesn't have to worry about that during her presentation as well. So that's, that's one of the big functions that we use um, from that side of things. Perfect, yeah, good point. Um, another option um, at the very bottom of the participant list, there's a few different buttons. And if you, um, I think now that I'm trying to think of what it actually says, I believe it says more. Um, if you click on that, this different menu appears. So I'm not clicking on a specific person this time. I'm just clicking on the, the main buttons on the bottom. And this you'd only see if you were the host. So you probably don't see it on your Zoom right now, but there's just a few different options. So. Perhaps you want to, like Jason mentioned, you can do it when you're setting up the meeting, but maybe you want to mute all participants upon entry. That's helpful when you have larger meetings just to kind of um, get that background noise out of there. Otherwise, it can be hard to hear. Um, maybe you don't want to allow participants to unmute themselves. That could be helpful. Um, I don't know why you wouldn't want to do this, but maybe you don't want to allow them to rename themselves. I guess maybe if you had um, younger students, maybe they could get a little inappropriate with that, but we've never had issues with people renaming themselves. Um, so there's just a few different options there. Um, I just wanted to point that out. And also, if Jason, you could keep an eye on the chat in case questions come up, because I can't really see it. So just let me know if, if anything comes up. The, the, the one that just popped up is how do I uh, how do I enter my actual name um, or rename yourself? So you're you're transitioning into rename that answer. Yourself. Perfect. Um, so there are two different ways to do this. You can rename yourself or as a host, you can rename other people. Um, this is especially helpful if you, um, you guys will know your athletes and your coaches and whatnot. So you can do it for them if that's easier. Um, I definitely have done that. Um, it just saves a little time. So there's two different ways to do it. If you, again, I, I have kind of two different screenshots here. So the one on the left is that participant list. If you click on the more button, just like we talked about before, this is that same menu, um, but there is a rename option. You would just click on that and type in their name. The other option, um, you can see my goofy face from the meeting the other day. Um, if you hover over someone's photo or video, I should say, um, there's either the unmute button as you see there in blue or those three dots. If you click on those three dots, this black menu appears and you can rename someone there. So sometimes it's easier um, to see a video, sometimes it's easier to see a list. So either, either way works. So I actually challenge you right now, if you look at your name that's on your video and it is not your current, if not your name, it's not who's on the call, I challenge you to rename yourself <laughs> so we know who's on the call. So go ahead and do that um, if you need to. Next up, this one's very basic, but I just want to point it out. Um, so I guess let me just go back quick. So on that participant list where there's rename there, I mentioned that there's a blue button to mute. You can also mute someone on their video or unmute them on their video. And just in general, um, oftentimes we have people start talking and you can you can see them talking, but you can't hear them because they're muted. So just be aware that in the bottom left corner, there is the unmute slash mute button. Um, so you might need to direct your athletes, especially if they're not familiar with Zoom, just direct them to unmute themselves when they um, need or want to talk. Very similarly, um, if you want to see their video and it's off, um, sometimes that happens. Um, right next to that unmute button is the stop or start video. So if you want to play around with it right now, you can kind of turn your video off and you'll see that that icon changes um, and then you can start the video as well. So you can kind of play around. I see some people doing that. So um, you can see how that works. So it's, it's helpful to know how to do it yourself so that you can explain it to your athletes um, and show them how to do it. Um, along with video, I just, I felt like it was important to point out a couple things just based on experience that we've had with um, various meetings and um, activities that we've done. Just a reminder to users, um, particularly athletes, but to adjust their camera when they're on the screen. 
Um, you want to think about, I, I listed three things here. I'm sure there's more, but one of them is lighting. I oftentimes see people sitting in the dark <laughs> and you can't really see them. <laughs> um, so just remind them like, hey, turn a light on or open the blinds. Um, if you can't see them, that's probably why they're sitting in a dark room. The other thing, and I actually just saw some people adjust their camera, so that's great, um, is the camera angle. Oftentimes I see this. I don't know if you can see me still. Um, but we're looking at people's foreheads, or maybe we're looking <laughs> at their chin, I don't know. So just reminding them to um, adjust their camera. This is especially important if you're, um, and we'll talk about different activities that you can do later, but if you're doing a workout, it's very helpful to have athletes adjust their camera. Um, maybe they're, they're moving or they're getting on the floor, it's nice to be able to adjust their camera so you can see them to make sure that they're doing things safely. Um, and another thing, this is more of a pet peeve of mine, but I thought I would share, um, is just the movement of the camera itself, especially when people are on their phones or iPads. Um, computers usually don't have this problem because they're sitting on a table or something. But with phones, people tend to hold them and so they're bobbing around. And I was, I was just describing to my coworkers, I was on a call once someone was sitting in a rocking chair. So I saw this for half an hour. And I'll tell you, I got a little seasick. <laughs> so just remind folks um, um, to be mindful that they're on camera um, and, and keep an eye on those things. Those are definitely not requirements. Those are just things to keep in mind. Um, so another feature which you have probably used, I know some people are already using in this meeting, which is great, is the chat function. So on the bottom of your screen, there's a little chat icon with a little bubble. Um, that is how you open up the chat, which will appear um, similarly to the participant list. It'll appear on the right side of your screen. And you're going to see my, I lost my mouse. There we go. Um, you'll see my chat, which don't worry, there's nothing bad in there, um, <laughs> appear from the other night. So I do want to talk about um, a couple different things. So you can have a chat to everyone, which is basically what you've been seeing in the chat so far but you can also do direct chats to a specific person. So you'll see here, <laughs> um, Jason, I'm ratting you out, um, direct messaged me on the meeting the other night and said, this is a great turnout. And I said, I know that, <laughs> you know, I hope they stay on. Um, so you can, you can message just one person and just that person will see, um, or you can message everybody. I do just wanna warn people like make sure you're double checking who you're messaging um you don't want to send something to the wrong person so just to, something to keep an eye on and the tricky part with zoom and some of the direct messaging is if somebody direct messages you first it automatically changes that your response back is the person who direct messaged you so if you're so if Brittany were to send me something in the chat right now that says like you know how many people do we have on and i and i and then i was going to respond something to the group, I would, it probably will go to her unless I change um, um, where it is. And you, if you see it on her screenshot, it says two. And so that will tell you who the direct message is for. And so um, rather, so it's it normally default starts at everyone. Um, so that's just something to look forward to. If somebody were to direct message you, know that you're probably the the, the automatic go to is going to be um, for Zoom to want you to direct response back to them. Awesome. Um, next up, this might be of interest to you. I'm I'm not sure, but I just wanted to share it in case it is. So we often record meetings. We're recording this meeting right now. Um, so that we can share it with folks afterwards. Um, that could be especially helpful if you're having more of like a agency update meeting and you wanna record it to send to folks that can't make it. Um, so it either is going to appear on your main screen on the bottom or the reason why there is a more button this time around on my screenshot, it's because I have the chat in the participant list open on the right. So um, it doesn't all fit on the bottom. So if you just clicked on more, then there'd be a few more options. So one of the options is record. And I recommend hitting record to the cloud just because um, recordings take up a lot of space. So if you record to your computer, it's just gonna take up a lot of your computer space. So I recommend um, clicking record to the cloud. And then Jason, I wasn't sure if you wanted to either double screen share or um, show how you can access that recording. Yep. 
Yeah, and I just switched over from that free account to my my normal Special Olympics paid account. So um, I, everything kind of shows up for what a paid account looks like. Excuse me. Uh, here, I will um, pull up this. I see the double screen share. Can you see mine? Um, you see my screen at all or no? No. Okay. Um, <laughs> let's see if I can. We're still learning too, guys. So don't worry if you have questions. We've not done the double before. It says you are screen sharing. I don't see it, but maybe it's because I have a site. Nope. I don't want to do. I can stop sharing if we want to just. I see it. Jason's. I don't see anybody else's. I see. Oh, okay. I see Brittany on the screen, but I see Jason recording. My my, my account here. So um, again, if you're on your profile. Um, you would just go to your recording section. And fortunately, I do have some stuff on my, my uh, recording section. So these are all to the cloud. So like last night's year in virtual celebration, it'll give you an option. You can hit share, and then you can send that directly to people to access this cloud link. Or if you want to download it to your computer, um, you can either, uh, you can, uh, I, I normally click on it. So you can watch it from here, um, or you can download the shared screen with speaker view. Or if you're like, hey, it was really more of an audio meeting. You know, if we're just doing a coach's meeting and there's no presentation or anything like that, you could download the audio only. And that's, you can tell here the size of it. Uh, doing audio only is about, for this last night's meeting is, a, is one fifth of what the one with video is. So if you want to try to save on memory or easier to share, you can do those things. Otherwise, you can copy a shareable link. Like if you, I guess before you hit copy and then you can hit paste in an email or you can hit control V in an email to paste the link and they can access it. So there's multiple different ways you can share these. Uh, your accounts do have a maximum storage uh, amount. So once you're done with the meeting, um, you can click, I'm, I'm not gonna do it for any of these right now just because I wanna keep hold on to them, but you can click that and you hit delete and in your and then it will go to your trash and it will actually the trash will um no i do not want to delete um but um uh, but then if you also have a trash bin and it will show you um this this interview was for our, our champions together breakfast back in october and so it's like it's deleted but then you can delete uh, permanently which which i can do so i'll do that one so now it's deleted permanently and so that gives you some options in there um, while I actually have the screen share, I was, I was going to tell you too, so let's say you have a, a, a Zoom account. Um, so you're signed in, you're on your Zoom account, and you're like, I have a meeting, I want to go, I just like messaged Brittany, I was like, hey, do you want to join on a meeting real quick? Rather than going through and scheduling meeting, you can also hit host a meeting, and you can choose video on, video, or video off or video on, and just start a meeting that like that. And then under, and then when you go it, it load up your, your Zoom meeting, and then once you're um, in that meeting, there's an invite button and you can copy and paste that invite and send it to them in an email or text message or whatever, which way would be easiest for you to get that information to them. So you can start instant meetings if you'd want to, and you could, or you can schedule a meeting ahead of time too, so. Awesome. And I see so many name changes, I love it. And Mark, I don't know if I'd qualify you as a Zoom expert yet, but I appreciate the enthusiasm. <laughs> I, I, I may have changed that for him. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> All right, so we'll get back to the presentation. Um, let me make it bigger here. Okay, so we talked about recording. Next, so this might be something that you're interested in, maybe not. Um, called either pinning or spotlighting a video. So um, if you pin a video, that's more for your personal viewing. So let's just say, I don't, I don't want to see everybody. I just wanna see Jason talk. I could pin Jason's video so that his video is on the whole time. Um, if I was the host and I wanted to spotlight somebody for everybody to see, um, it's the same kind of concept, but then everybody sees that particular video as opposed to just you. Um, the reason why you would might wanna do this, um, I'll give an example that we used the other night. We had our dance and it was just kind of fun to highlight some dancers going around. So we were spotlighting people just for 
20 seconds or so and kind of just going around um, giving everybody kind of their their moment in the spotlight so that could be something that's interesting to you um, maybe not but I just wanted to show that in case um, you wanted to do that and again to get to this menu option you click on someone's video uh, or hover over someone's video and click on those blue dots um, or rather white dots the blue square um, and this menu option will come up uh, also something to note when you spotlight video, it will ask them to unmute themselves automatically. So we normally, if you saw during, or if you're on the dance last night, you'll see athletes dancing, we spotlight them and also they stop and they're like, what does my screen say? It's because it's asking them to unmute themselves. Cause the idea, I think it's the idea is used in a meeting or even in a classroom setting where you're to call on somebody. So you're, you're then spotlighting them for the people to see and then they would be able to answer. So it's just telling them to unmute themselves. So just a heads up on that that we found during our dance sessions. Any questions so far on some of the more, I'll call basic features of Zoom? We're gonna get to a little bit more advanced features like polls, breakout rooms, things like that, but I just wanted to pause. I can't see anyone. So if there are questions, please unmute or, or Jason, let me know. I'm watching the chat. I haven't seen anything new on there. All right, well, we'll keep going. Um, so first of all, we're gonna talk about breakout rooms, but before I get to show you how to actually do that, I just wanna remind people um, with Zoom in general, um, we wanna treat Zoom, even though it's virtual, we wanna treat it like it's in person. So think about our protective behaviors. We never really wanna have a one-on-one -on -one situation um, with an athlete. It's just kind of a vulnerable situation to be in. So if you are going to do breakout rooms, a reminder to have at least three people in there, um, just so you, you know, you never know what's going to happen. You don't want anything inappropriate to happen or claim that it, something inappropriate happens. So just keep that in mind. Um, when you do breakout rooms, you can, as the host, join any room that you like. So we encourage you to sporadically check in on those breakout rooms. It kind of depends, um, what you're using them for, but, um, that's one way to kind of keep an eye on things. And then just, again, a reminder, the code of conduct applies to all Zoom meetings. So there shouldn't be any swearing or inappropriate language or talk or anything like that. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there. Um, people don't forget. But to actually run a breakout room, so like pretty much everything we've talked about so far, the menu on the bottom has a icon that says breakout rooms with some boxes. So you would click on that. And when you click on that, um, the first screen you'll see is the one on the left. It'll ask you how many breakout rooms you want to create. Um, and then if you would like to assign them automatically, manually, or let their participants choose. So it really depends on what you're using them for. Um, typically in our meetings, when we've used breakout rooms, um, we've used them for all staffs just to have um, more small group conversations. Um, so that could be something where you assign them automatically and it's just automatically assigns to a certain number of breakout rooms. If you were saying, let's, let's say you have all your basketball players on the Zoom call, but you want to break out into your four different teams, you would want to assign manually so that you can control who's going into which room. So that's the way I just kind of set it up here. So let's just say we have four basketball teams and we want to assign manually. Then once you hit create, it'll go to this next screen on the right um, and it'll give you the list of your four rooms. And then on the right, it'll say assign. When you click on assign, the entire list of participants that are in the meeting will appear and you can click on your team. So room number one is gonna be your first team and you're gonna click Susie, Johnny, you know, whoever it is and put them in that room. You'll click on room two assign and then it'll be the remaining people that haven't been assigned yet. And eventually, so eventually the list will get shorter and shorter. When you have made all your assignments, then you can click that blue button that says open all rooms. Um, and that will allow people to get into the rooms. You can try to, there's a few different options, but I wanna keep it as simple as possible. So when you click that open all rooms, um, a pop-up video or pop-up, not video, pop-up box will appear on everybody's individual screen and it'll say, you know, go to breakout room number three. You know, click on it and that person will then go to that breakout room. Um, 
that make sense? It's kind of hard to explain without actually doing it, but just wanted to give a rough idea of what that looks like. Hey, Brittany, real quick. I was, I was going to answer, or answer a question from the chat um, from something previous. So somebody had asked uh, to pin and spotlight, do you have to be the person running the meeting? Anybody can pin a video. So right now, if you're if you're looking at uh, you know all the different videos, no matter which I don't know, whichever setup you have, if you hover your mouse over a specific person's um, screen, you'll see that those they'll they'll have the they'll have dots next to them, uh, like the three dots that Brittany had shown, and you can pin video. So you can have it, you'll be able to do that. Otherwise, um, for spotlighting, you do need to be a host or a co-host to spotlight video because. Uh, that's a function of running the entire meeting where our pin video is just individual. So I want to touch base on that. And I saw a couple of people mention now that uh, that Brittany said that was the basic functions and people are saying that was basic. Just a reminder, uh, the basic functions is what 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 we've kind of determined as basic functions. These are the functions that we use in like every meeting that like every general meeting that you could use. You, those are the main functions that we use as we go through polls and breakout rooms. These are added tools. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the training, Zoom can be as simple or as complex as you want it to be. And we're just getting a little bit into the more of the complex features, uh, but they are, there are some benefits to using them. And that's why, you know, kind of the dis different distinctions between uh, basic and, and advanced. So don't, if you're overwhelmed, I completely understand. We've been on Zoom since, what, actually we started a little bit before March, probably about February. So we're, we're, we're approaching a year on Zoom and, and we've done a lot of trial and error. And so I would encourage you, these things are interesting, uh, seem interesting to you or something that your agency could use, feel free to do a test meeting with one or two of your other coaches and just try it out. Um, Cause that's, that's a lot of what we did is trial and error. So don't feel overwhelmed. And obviously, you know, Brittany and myself or other people would be more than happy to help answer some questions as you get into using Zoom, your Zoom accounts. So, um, and then Mike Stewart asked me, uh, can a person access uh, join Zoom meetings from a smartphone? The answer is yes. Um, they can either click on that link, um, and, I, and they also know from a smartphone or tablet, you can download the Zoom um, app. And when you say, and you, if you sign on to the Zoom app and you want to join a meeting, it'll ask you for a meeting ID. And that's normally, that's also included in the invite. So we'll say there's like a, I think it's like a nine digit number or something like that. that that's automatically assigned to that meeting. So we just use that uh, meeting ID on your Zoom app to jump into a meeting that, that, that somebody else is hosting. Sorry, Brittany. <laughs> oh, you're good, that's great. Brittany, can I ask you a question back to those, go back to your screen when you had those breakouts? Yep. Okay, so if you were um, the coach or let's say you had four different coaches I'm trying to figure out why you would have these breakout rooms. So would you, are you, okay, I gotta think about how, so let's say that the, let's say your coaches are all gonna, would all the coaches be on this same meeting and then each coach would just click on their room and then start having their own meeting at the same time or? Yeah, so it kind of depends on how your agency is structured. So if you, if you have a large agency where there's multiple teams of things, like I'm just using basketball as an example, but um, I know sometimes all the basketball teams practice at the same time, but the courts are big enough where they're all on their own court when it's in person. So you could mimic that structure so that you're still all having practice at Tuesdays at seven o'clock or whatever it is. Um, but then you're still meeting on an individual team basis. So each room would be each team's practice. Another option would just be to have each team have their own practice time. But there's only so many hours in the day and so many days in the week that sometimes it overlaps. So this is kind of a, a way to get around it if you um, wanted to meet at the same time as another team, if that makes it sense. And, and we've also, you could use it for some different functions as we get to like some activities you wanna do with athletes. If you're doing a game where it'd be helpful for a group of people to leave the room for a certain period of time and then bring them back into the room for a guest or something. You know, if you're gonna do like a match game or something like that, there's ways to use it. It basically, what it just does is it puts them in a separate meeting room, but it doesn't make them leave the entire meeting. Right. 
yeah, maybe in like, yeah, it doesn't have to be a sport practice. Let's say you were having just like activity hour, um, just like a fun, a fun night. Um, well, maybe room one is trivia and room two is bingo and room three is charades. And then you divvy it up that way. So wherever athletes want to go, they go into that room. So that would be an option where you would maybe have let participants choose their room. Um, and you would just tell them room one is this is the activity room two, this is the activity. So that way, again, it's still all at the same time, but then there's different things going on in each room. That so then sense. different people would be running each room. Correct. I would assign, if, if I were you, I would assign a coach or someone to lead each of those rooms in whatever the activity is. Okay. And so would they just click on that room and then it, they would have their group on their tablet or their computer yep, and it would automatically? You, yep. If you were assigning it manually, you would just make sure you assign that particular coach to that room. Or if you were letting the participant choose, you would just make sure that that coach knew which room they were going to. But okay. when you when you assign the rooms and you hit open all rooms, what will actually happen on each individual screen, it will pop open that says you've uh, you, you've been invited to uh, break out room number one and then you hit OK to join room and then you'll join that room. So it prompts you to join the room or it will give you or you can give them the option to choose which room they're jumping into. As you open them. Um, Brittany, Zoom expert Mark Wolfram asks, uh, how do you limit the length of time for breakout rooms? Yeah, that's a great option or a great question. So I believe, and I don't have it up, but I believe if you click on this blue options button on the bottom, it'll give you a few different things. You can limit the note, how long that they're in there for, or um, as the host, once you've sent people to their rooms, you stay in what I'll just say is the main room, this main room that we're in right now. And then you still have the function to end the breakout rooms in a certain amount of time. I'm not explaining this well. So Jason, feel free to ho holler if I'm, if you can explain it better, but um, you can either set a time limit on the rooms. So maybe you just want to send people there for 10 minutes, or you can send people there and then just keep an eye on your clock, on your watch or whatever it may be. And at that 10 minute mark, you can close the breakout rooms and it'll prompt people to come back. Does that answer that question? And, and it will, it, and it, would, I don't know, it also, if the Zoom rooms are closing, it does give, you know, it gives a countdown and all that type of stuff. So you know how much time you have left. So I've been in meetings where we're sharing and then all of a sudden somebody goes, okay, we have 30 seconds. So I'm just quick, finish my idea. And then you kind of just go or you can choose to leave. Um, do we have, uh, I'm looking at it right now, uh, Brittany, do we have the function to practice a breakout room yeah, I'm real quick? Just, I'm gonna do it right now. So you have all been randomly assigned. I'm just gonna double check that there is a staff person in each room that is familiar maybe with, um, with everything. Okay, so there is definitely a staff member in every room. I hope the staff member knows what they're doing, but um, you will be prompted. So um, if you have any questions, you can always um, you can always leave the breakout room. So I'm gonna just open the room. I'm um, just gonna double check that my settings are right. Okay, so you should see a prompt on your screen that is inviting you and you just click on that and you'll be leaving, which I think most of you are. Linda, how you doing? <laughs> You're still here. Maybe you fell asleep on me, that's all right.
I, I closed the room. So um, people got like a 30 second warning. So people then trickle in and start to come back to the main room. Hmm. Magic. Magic. <laughs> Wasn't that fun, everyone? <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> Brittany, you made me do the quick talk at the end of ours. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but um, the, question, the question that came up in our breakout room was, do all the breakout rooms have to last the same amount of time or can you have some designated for longer and shorter? And I think the easiest way to, I said, I think the easiest way from a setup standpoint is to not set a length of time, but you can end breakout rooms manually. Yeah, so you, you all had the ability to leave the room whenever you wanted. Um, but then I chose to end the rooms for everyone um, to get people back. So I guess, yeah, I would not set a limit, but then just let people come back to that main room if they're done earlier. And I couldn't figure out how to come back to the room, to the main room. Yeah, until and eventually, <laughs> yeah, eventually time runs out and you're just automatically kicked back. So that, that right. does happen with people all the time. Um, so at least you'll know that if someone doesn't know how to get back, they'll, they'll get back, so. You won't if lose. I wanted to leave early, I couldn't find the way to leave early. In the bottom right corner, similar, so please don't leave the meeting, but similar to how <laughs> there's a red button that says end, right. end or leave meeting, uh -huh. there, in the breakout room, there's a blue button that says leave, um, and you'd leave the breakout room to come back to the main. Okay, that wasn't showing up, but that's if, all right. If, it, if it's not showing up, you need to, you, you would move your mouse over the, the video area of the screen because it hides itself if it's, if you're, if you're, inactive kind of like a um so right now if you leave your mouse alone right now you won't see the leave meeting button after like a 10 seconds because it goes away just to make it cleaner but if you move your mouse over the screen then all that stuff will pop up and the same thing when you're hosting the meeting at the very bottom where you see participants screen share and, and chat and all that stuff that goes away after i think it's five or ten seconds of inactive so it, then it just cleans it up for you so i didn't see the leave button until i hit the chat button Yep. So once I hit chat, then I saw the leave button. Okay. Um, the other part too, part if you're hosting a meeting, and I don't, Brittany, I'm sorry if I'm going to steal your thunder here on this, but if you're hosting a meeting and, you're, uh, and you have people in breakout rooms, the host can send a message, a chat message to all the different breakout rooms. So if you're saying, hey, we're going to wrap it up in two minutes now, you can send that chat to all the breakout rooms, or you can say, um, Hey, you know, Ozaki's on. Hey, Ozaki Condors, um, please come back to the main room if you're going to try to pull people in like one at a time into the bigger room or something like that. So there's probably a lot more things that we could talk about just with breakout rooms, but um, I know that's not going to apply to everybody. So I don't want to spend too much time because um, I do want to go over a couple more things and I know we're already um, approaching time. So I'm going to. Real quick. Actually, yeah. do you want me to show where you find the setup for that real quick in the in the profile? Oh, um, yeah, probably. And then while you're in there, do you want to do polls? Yep. All right. So we're back on the Zoom page. Um, my video on the way. So I'm going to go again into my account. And then when you go into meetings, um, actually, if you go to settings, sorry. There's meeting settings. So this is where I'm talking about, there's a lot of things that Zoom can do. <laughs> um, and you can see even in my account, we don't have everything checked. But what you're gonna do, um, you're gonna scroll down and there's gonna be a part in here that's just gonna say, it should be under um, um, meetings basic, I believe it's under, maybe it's the advanced one. But when you, you when you scroll in here, you, you there's a there's a part where you can enable a whiteboard, some of that stuff, and then there should be as we you already up, passed it, Jason. If you want to go back up, the breakout room right here. Was there another one up here? <laughs> no, I was thinking you were looking for polls. Polls was a little further up. Yep. So breakout room right here. You just you just in your meeting settings, you just make sure that this is turned on. Um, and that way for any meeting that you host, you have the option to do break, the host would have the option to break out rooms. If it's on and you don't use them, it's not that big of a deal, but if you wanna use them, you wanna turn it on in your meeting settings. 
Um, and the same thing for that for polls, which is the next thing I'll, we'll go over how to use, and then Brittany will show you how to do it in meeting on the on the PowerPoint. But there's an option here underneath basic settings in meeting basic settings of polling. If you turn those on, um, there's two ways you can create polls. So the first thing is I'm going to go back to my main menu to my meeting screen where it has all my meetings listed. And so I have one tomorrow morning. Um, I'm going to edit it. Uh, since it's a recurring meeting, at meeting, it asked me if I want to do all occurrences or just this occurrence. I'm going to do this one because it's only a single meeting that's easiest to do. So when I go into the edit function of it, it will tell you what the meeting is and all that information you've already set up. If you go all the way down. Um, do I have hold on a second? It's actually not edit. I think you just click on the meeting itself. I did this the other day. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, you just click on it. Yep, yeah. you're right. So you just click on the meeting. At the very bottom, it says on the right underneath even says start this meeting in this meeting all this information. So you clicked on the meeting and you scroll down to the bottom of the screen. There's this box here that says that says you have not created a poll yet. You could say add a poll. And so you have a title of the poll, which that you'll only see. Um, um, I'm just going to make it welcome. And you can type your question and you. So my question is like. It's going to say, are you happy to be here? And then you can select the number of answers. You can have up to 10 answers. So I'm going to say yes is an answer and no is an answer. And you can either allow people to, um, to click um, one option or they can check, check multiple options. And you can also click on this so that when they fill out the poll, uh, it's anonymous. So if you want people to be you have something that you want general information on, but you want people to feel safe being honest with it. Uh, maybe hitting anonymous might be interesting. You can also set up, and then when you're done with that, you can hit save. You can also add a second question, and you could have multiple poll questions um, for your meeting as well. So when you hit, then you'll hit save. Oh, actually, I'll delete this one. Um, so then I'm gonna hit save. So then in my meeting, now you'll see in the bottom, poll one, welcome. Are you happy to be here? Answer yes, answer no. And then we'll be able to pull that up in that meeting that we've created. Um, Brittany will show you where to find that on while well, you're in the meeting. But if you were in a meeting and you wanted to add a poll, basically when you do that, uh, do the function that Brittany tells you, it will give you an option to add a poll. But when you do that, it's going to bring you back to your the web page and you're going to have to add it the way you would do if you're going to set it up prior to a meeting. That makes sense. So whatever the process we just did is the process you'll do whether you're in a meeting or 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 pre prior to a meeting. It is just easier to do prior to a meeting than you have it ready. Um, and of course, polls are next. I went a little out of order. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. That was, that was it. Was good to show that while you had it up. So before we get to polls, I just want to quick talk about screen sharing. Um, or playing videos, maybe you're um, you're wanting to do a workout video that you found online. So you're gonna share the video with the group or something like that. Um, and obviously Jason and I have been screen sharing this entire time for the most part. So um, you're familiar with what that looks like on your end, but I just wanna show you what it looks like um, from the host side of things. So once again, on the bottom on that menu bar, you'll see screen or share screen. Um, you would click on that. And then I do wanna just say, if you click on the arrow, there's a few different options. So you can have one participant sharing at a time. Jason and I tried to do multiple and as you saw, that didn't quite work out. So we're still learning to, um, but really um, you would just click on the green button and then this window pops up. So, oh, I'm making a lovely face in that screen, um, but you would just choose which, um, which item you want to share. So, Right now on this particular screen, I could share my screen or I could share my, this is my email account or I have a Teams chat, um, but whatever you wanna share, um, like right now I'm sharing my PowerPoint, um, you would just click on that and click share. I do wanna just say, if you are gonna click on a video, if you're playing a video from the internet or something, um, you wanna make sure you click on this button in the bottom left corner that says share computer sound Otherwise, um, everyone else won't be able to hear the video. Um, it's a little confusing because you can hear it playing from your computer, but they can't hear it. So I just want to make sure you click on that. 
Um, and it probably won't hurt to click on optimize the screen share for the video clip as well. So as we just talked about polls. So I think the easiest way is to create them ahead of time. Um, it allows you to actually just kind of sit down and think about what your questions are going to be, what your answers are going to be, and things like that. Um, but you can add polls when you're already in the meeting, as Jason mentioned. So when you would click on the polls button, um, if there aren't any polls already created, there's just a big blue button that says add polls. And that would bring you to the same page that Jason had up um, where you would add the polls just like you described. So there's a few different options. Once you actually have the polls set up in your meeting, um, again, bottom of your screen, you click on the polls button. And of course, I don't have another screenshot, but um, it would just pop up and then you would click um, share poll. And so then everyone on the meeting would all of a sudden this question would pop up that they can answer and submit. Um, so. And then the, the poll, the poll will be open as long as you want it to be. And so there's a running clock with how long the poll has been open. So I might say, OK, everybody, we're going to open a poll. It's going to take it will give everybody a minute to respond to it. And then after a minute, I'm, you'll hit end poll and then it will say there's an option for you to share res, share results. And then you'll then everybody in the meeting will see what the results are. And then um, then you can then you'll have to hit like stop sharing results. Um, so um, I wish we were able to do a screen do a screen share to show you what that looks like. But yeah, um, it's hard, hard to do it. But it it it. it uh, uh, when you are the one who runs the poll, I also mentioned this because Mark and I used to uh, do a lot of these polls when we did our sports cast. Um, but when you run the poll, uh, if you're the host, you can see the results in live time, but the people voting won't be able to see the results in live time until you, uh, so they only see the results once you hit share results with everybody. So what, what it might be a good thing to do, um, 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 what, what a good reason to use polls for is I, I know I know Brittany used them yesterday with her uh, fun fitness stuff of like how many times do you exercise a week you'd be able to just get general information from asking that way or if you're in an agency meeting and you're trying to vote on doing something yay or nay rather than going around the room you can just create a poll and you can like that might be a good time to make it anonymous or whatever it is so um, Sharon asked can you download the polls I've never done that before uh, I don't know if I believe the information can be downloaded after the fact. Um, I'd have to look into that to confirm. Um, but I'm no. pretty positive you can see the results after the fact. I don't think you necessarily would see each in each person's response. I'm not 100% sure. That's a great question. I can look into that. Um. All right, let's see. Um, what you're showing is from the host screen for the host to control, correct? Yep, so so the extra features that we're showing, um, like the polls and the breakout rooms and all that type of stuff, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you probably are able to see like the mute and the video uh, options as well as the participants. I think you could pull up participants in chat, but we also have the additional factors of screen uh, of uh, recording and um, the screen share. I think you can see screen share, but it may not be functional. Um, but the host can see breakout rooms and polls and all that type of stuff where just participants at that. And again, that's another reason where maybe you would want to assign a co-host if you're presenting and then the co-host co can launch a poll or launch a breakout room. Um, they can do that. Um, well, so you can kind of have double team that a little bit. Um, Kathy had asked if you if you want to share an exercise video, do you save it ahead of time or link it during the meeting? So what if you want to screen share a video, which you know we've done previously, you know show a YouTube video or something like that. What you want to do is have it loaded up, um, loaded up, and then when you hit screen share, you'll have the option to share that. So if you pull it up on a web browser on YouTube, um, then you'll you'll when you hit screen share. Uh, one of those little boxes that Brittany was showing has, you know, it said like, oh, she had one that was for her chat and one for her email. Like one of those boxes will be the the video portion that you see, or you you can just generally sh share a screen. 
and go to YouTube. You can see what I do in my free time yoga videos. <laughs> um, so I would probably pull this up ahead of time so it doesn't load like this, but um, then you can play this video for your athletes to do um, and you can make it bigger so they, whatnot, but we don't need to watch it all. <laughs> So and do you download that video from your desktop or do you have to download it to Zoom? So this video is actually just on the internet. So I pulled up, so right now I'm sharing my desktop so you can see my icons over here. Um, so I just clicked on Google Chrome. Um, so this is just the internet um, and I opened up YouTube and I'm just playing it straight from, from YouTube. So I didn't have to download the video at all. So you have to be it, really careful when you hit that share. Make sure that yep. yeah, you could definitely you share. Don't, you, you don't, don't want to share have something short share that you don't. Yep. You want to be careful. Okay. You know, I always be mindful if my email is up or my team's chat is up just because I don't necessarily want um, everyone seeing my email and things. So um, yeah, definitely be mindful of what you're sharing. And, and I will say too, even if you don't have your email showing, if it's one of those things where like, if you get an email and it automatically prompts you, It'll you know, it will up. say, you know, so and so, you know, have that little prompt that comes up in the corner sometimes. So I know a lot of time when we were in uh, on a like a sports uh, department meeting, sometimes it will pop up of say like so and so email and then the, the title of the email. So if that's something you want to be careful about, uh, then maybe it's best just to close out your email when you're doing these. Things. So just some things to think about. Um, well, I guess were there any other questions coming through before I? No, I don't. That was we hit the ones that we are that was that was in the chat. Awesome. Um, and we will I'll, I mean, I'm fine sticking on afterwards too if people have follow up questions, but I do just want to talk real quick about some possible activities um, that you can do on zoom. So of course, you could have weekly or monthly agency updates. Um, however, you choose to run um, agency matters. Um, you could also, we have a fitness competition coming up, so that would be a great way to run your practices. Um, basically, essentially, they would just be workouts at that point. Um, I didn't put on here, but obviously sports practices too. Um, you could run virtually if you're not in person yet. Um, we have done a lot of different athlete activities, um, including a scavenger hunt, which has been a real big hit. Um, just real quickly, basically, that's just, you're all on video and you say, okay, go get something that's red and people have to leave their computer and find something that's red and bring it back. And um, it's just a fun little activity. You could make it themed. Um, we've done an alphabet version. So you pick a letter of the alphabet, find something that starts with the letter C. You have to run, kind of get creative. I would probably grab my cat that's laying there <laughs> and pick him up um, and bring him back to your computer. So it's just a fun little activity if you were just looking for something fun to do. Um, bingo. Jeopardy and or trivia, put a little star next to those. They do require a little bit of planning ahead. You'd have to create bingo boards and have your trivia planned ahead of time. Um, but there's lots of online resources for those. Um, you of course could just have a dance party, play some music um, and let people dance the night away. That's always fun. Um, you could have a movie night. So instead of sharing my yoga video, I could have shared a movie. Um, I will say you probably need a pretty good internet connection for that just so it's not skipping, but um, that is an option. Um, and there's probably loads and loads of other ideas if you want to share them in the chat, if you've done something yourself, or if you have an idea that other people might find interesting, um, feel free to share that in the chat. Uh, I will say too, some of these activities, we have tried those with, uh, you know, we were doing the weekly SOE Live stuff. And so if you're like, hey, I might be interested in bingo, I wonder what that looks like. We probably have a recorded version of that that we could send you if you want to, you want to see something that we've run in the past to see how that works. Yeah. And then we can also connect you with whoever was the lead on that, um, how they may have set it up, and and if you have any questions on that as well. Um, and then like for like and um, you know, so we've all these these ideas that have been put up there are things that we have tried or we've, we've seen others try. And so if you have a question that'd be interested but you don't quite know how to execute it, feel free to reach out to us. Um, if you don't know which staff member to reach out to, you can always email that COVID email address too. And uh, plenty of us are monitoring that one that we can at least, or we can forward it along to anybody who can help you out on, on any of these resources. 
And then just real quick, um, as part of the registration, I had people submit questions. Um, most of them, I think, were answered by just the material that we covered, but there were a few that were not. So I just wanted to touch on those. So how do we keep athletes or families interested? Um, this is a great question. This is definitely something that we have dealt with um, with our SOE lives. It's kind of why we had to eliminate some of them is because our participation was going down. Um, some tips that we have are being consistent with your schedule. So if you are going to have like, let's just say a, a fun athlete activity, I would keep it consistent. You know, Tuesdays at seven o'clock, that's our fun athlete activity. Um, basketball practice is Thursdays at seven or, you know, whatever it may be, whatever works for you. Um, I think consistency helps if you, you know, this week it's five o'clock on Tuesday, but next week it, it's seven o'clock on Friday. It gets a little confusing and people forget which week is which day and which time and all things like that. So I recommend being consistent. That can help. Um, as far as athlete activities go, I recommend mixing them up so things don't get stale. Um, I guess it kind of depends on your group. Maybe they just really love bingo and they only want to do bingo. That's fine. Um, ask them what they want to do. I think that can go a long way in doing what they want um, to some extent. Um, those are just some of the tips that I had for that. Um, again, if you have any ideas, if you um, learn along the way, um, feel free to share them with us. Or if you have any ideas now, you can share them in the chat. But um, we're still kind of figuring that question out ourselves. So we, if anybody finds the magic solution, please let us know. <laughs> we, we learned a little bit the hard way. Um, for some of our SOE Live stuff, we were doing stuff during the day and people had asked us to move them later in the afternoon. And we found that we lost a lot of people with changing the time because those people who are so used to logging in at one o'clock on a Friday to do this. And when we moved it to 4.30, um, they were, that schedule was turned off. So that was that consistency idea that, that Brittany had mentioned. Um, so, so that's a good thing to do. Um, I was gonna mention, Wells had asked a question about if you have a Zoom, a, a, a page, so the Soy Zoom account, um, then you could show the movie for the length of the, the movie. There's no time limit for a paid account. The only thing that would, that would so you could you could have a Zoom, um, like we, we uh, you know, for our celebration ceremonies, the first night of our fall outdoor celebration ceremony, we had the Zoom account running for four hours consistently. So there's no maximum limit for the length of your meeting. The only thing is you can't run multiple meetings at the same time. So if you have a three hour meeting and somebody wants to have a meeting in the middle of it, then you wouldn't be able to do that. But if you're sharing a movie, like if you were to say, I'm screen sharing, I'm gonna log on to my Netflix account and I can watch a movie together with all the athletes. We can kind of interact during the movie doing that. The only limit that you have on a paid account is that you just can't do multiple meetings at the same time. So if you have three hours set away for that to watch a movie, go right ahead uh, and do that. If you have three hours for an activity you wanna do, there's not a limit on that. We've, we've pushed the limits as far as uh, the length of time and we've never gotten even an ounce of a, a kickback from it. The other thing I will say though, is if you plan on recording your meeting, that were, that might be your limit because you'll run out of storage mm -hmm. if you have a really long meeting. Um, like for example, we'll probably have to download this meeting after after this one's done. So we have enough uh, space on our account to, to do a recording for tomorrow night's um, coaches meeting. Good call. <laughs> Um, and then just a couple other things. There are Zoom tutorials that are available online. I mean, I know you attended this meeting tonight and hopefully it was helpful, um, but there are things, I mean, honestly, Google is a great resource. <laughs> um, Googling it, or if you do create a Zoom account, I believe there are different tutorials on Zoom that you can watch. Um, I've done it myself where I'm like, how do I do that on Zoom? And I just Google it. So. Um, another option would be reaching out to, like Jason mentioned, really any of us as staff, we'd be happy to help. Your local athletic director is a great resource, or like Jason mentioned, that COVID email um, is monitored by many people. So um, we are here to help in any way that we can. Brittany, if you um, will, uh, let me screen share, I can show you people where to find the tutorials on their Zoom account. Too. Oh yeah, that'd be great. And then just as we mentioned in the very beginning, we are recording this. Um, Sorry, I can't multitask. Uh, we are recording this meeting, and so we will share the recording. Um, we'll probably, I would imagine, put it up on our website at some point somewhere. Um, but I'll also share this PowerPoint that I've been sharing. I know it doesn't have a lot of words on it. It's mostly images, but um, hopefully with it paired with the meeting, that can be helpful. So um, 
And then all I had left on my PowerPoint was just kind of opening it up to questions. I know we've kind of reached our 8.30 time frame, so thank you for sticking with us. But um, if you feel like you've gotten what you needed and you need to jump off, that's fine. But if you have questions, feel free to either enter them in the chat or um, just unmute. And then real quick, if you're on your profile for the for Zoom, if you see you have the profile meeting, webinars, all that type of stuff, if you go down to this section right here, it has your training options. So there's you click there's video tutorials um, and you can see it will go through how to join a meeting, scheduling a meeting, meeting controls, all that type of stuff, similar to what we've gone over tonight. Um, I have not clicked on, I can also check this out, uh, attend live trainings. I'm assuming that they have certain meetings that you can get um, sign up for with your account to go and, and get more on, live training like we did tonight, but through the actual Zoom people, as well as um, I'm not quite sure what knowledge base is, but these are all resources. So um, recordings from live trainings and tutorials and how to record meetings and all that type of stuff is also available there. So if you need a refresher and you don't want to rewatch this whole training that we put on, there's some shorter snippets from Zoom that you can go through as well. And then like Brittany said, like like anything else nowadays, if you Google it and you want a specific thing in Zoom, you could probably find a quick two minute video that tells you how to set it up and do it. Um, but yeah, and then we're also very um, willing. I, my to husband works in IT and he says that IT guys are the best Googlers you'll ever meet. So <laughs> <laughs> um, before you reach out to us, I recommend just typing it in Google and I'm sure something will pop up. <laughs> well, and I wanted to uh, thank Jason and Brittany for your time in, in showing us basics and more advanced. I appreciate it. I've learned a lot and I'm, I'm being tested uh, for future meetings. So, uh, but you take the time to look through it. If you're interested in the, um, the paid account, please let us know. There's a form that we will send to you to fill out so we can capture the information and talk about you know uh, funds and, and all of that. So that's kind of in place. If you think you uh, and want to try the free version and realize that maybe you need more, just let us know. Um, and then we can work from there. Uh, as Brittany and Jason had mentioned, um, the regional staff are very strong in, uh, in Zoom. They've done it. Uh, and so don't be afraid to reach out or Google. Google is my friend. Um, so, but I want to thank everyone for their time and appreciate you uh, taking the initiative to uh, to take this on and, and look at different ways to work within your agencies and your and meeting with families and coaches and athletes and the, the whole connection going forward. And then as a kind of a final note from the Special Olympics Wisconsin staff, we wish you a healthy and safe holiday. Uh, enjoy and, uh, and, and bring uh, bring that those smiles to the coming year. So thank you, everyone. I just have one question. This was very helpful. Now we've only done team basketball before. I've never done skills. I'm going to try and do skills. Is there any way that we could maybe do some training with Zoom or something for some like agencies like me that have never done skills basketball before? Sure, we can do that. And I also know, uh, Mark, you, you, we, we um, previously had recorded some basketball skills videos, some training tutorial videos that are on the website. We were trying to get a, a level three one recorded and gym space and, and um, people with better basketball abilities than Mark and myself um, are limited right now. Um, but um, we can definitely um, talk about setting something up as we get to the to, to January about going through some stuff if that's um, a need that people have of, of wanting to go through some basketball skill stuff but uh, Sharon for the time being I can also share uh, with you um, the skills videos that are already recorded for level one and level two. If, and if you're going to get a paid account is there a deadline should we do it within the next 30 days you have six months um, do you guys have any idea? I, I, I don't believe there's a limit um, I would recommend trying the free account maybe over the holidays and just kind of um, 
dabbling with it and some of the things and then see if you need that extra level and then maybe come new year we can talk about it but yeah there i mean if you decide in may that like darn i should have got that paid account that's fine we can we can do it then it doesn't it, have to it, be right there as long as i think as long as we have our accounts through special olympics that it would be available just note that whatever day you start your paid account that's when your 12 months should start. Okay, you were to start at January 1st, much. then you know how to renew it uh, by, you know, it's going to renew next January 1st. Um, and I will say on a similar note to uh, basketball skills training, we will be having a fitness training um, because it is a new sport and um, a lot of people are unfamiliar with it because we haven't shared too many of the details yet. Um, in mid-January, we will be doing a Zoom, not a Zoom training like this, but a Zoom training for the fitness competition. So um, any coaches um, or anyone really, athletes are welcome to, um, can come on and learn more about the fitness competition. I have not set a date yet. Um, I will do that as soon as I can. And again, we can st stay on and answer questions. If you, feel, if you feel like you've gotten what you needed, you can feel free to jump off at this point, but uh, Brittany and myself can st stick, stick around and answer some questions if people have some more um, that they feel like that would be beneficial for them in a smaller group or, or uh, as people log off here. So um, if, you, if you feel like you want to jump off, thanks for coming. Uh, have a great night. Thank you. Thank and, you. And, yeah, otherwise, we'll be around for some questions if you have some. Thank you. It was very helpful. Thank you. Yep. I think I'm going to stop recording at this point just Perfect. to...